Bruno Fernandes has been heavily linked with Manchester United and a deal may well be done this transfer window. While it could be argued that Fernandes is not going to fill some of the more pressing needs in the Manchester United squad, he's a talented attacking midfielder who last season scored 20 goals for Sporting Club de Portugal, the second highest in the league, as well as registering 13 assists, again the second most. This season, at the time of writing, he has eight league goals, four of which have come from the penalty spot, and seven assists from 15 appearances already. Fernandes is the dominant force in Sporting's side, the player through whom most things go. Indeed, for all the players in the Portuguese Primera who've played over 700 minutes this season, not just sporting players, Fernandes is 10th for expected goals per 90, 7th for expected assists per 90, 1st for smart passes, or passes that open up attacking opportunities for their team, 4th for passes into the final third, and 1st for deep completed passes. There is an argument about so-called stat padding in the Portuguese top flight, that a player like Fernandes can dominate because the league is weaker overall, and there is some truth to this, but Portugal is the best-rated league outside of the top five in Europe by club ELO rankings, and Sporting equate to a mid- to lower-half Premier League side by the same measure. The club has used a variety of systems this season, but generally prefer a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3. The C. Bruno Fernandes deployed as either a 10 playing behind the striker, generally the Brazilian Luis Felipe, or as a flanking central midfielder in a three anchored by Idrissa Dumbia. Fernandez's movement is smart. He's adept at fashioning shooting chances through the timing of his runs. He likes to loiter in the space between the defence and the midfield line and then either burst past the defensive line if they're relatively static, for example if they're expecting a floated ball into a tall striker, or receive the ball in space in front of the defensive line and shoot from distance. He also likes to drift into the right half space, scoring from here this season against Elias K of Austria and Rosenberg of Norway, attacking the channel and isolating the centre-back on that side. He can use his technical control to cut back inside, as against Rosenberg, or just beat the goalkeeper low and with power, as against Elias K. The key is finding the space and attacking it, and he excels at this. A number of his assists come from this area too, especially if sporting break at pace. Fernandes will target the channel and look to cross to those running into the box, but he's also capable of standing a player up and crossing well from a standing position with curl on the ball swinging from right to left. As a corner taker, this is useful too, and his set-piece delivery can be impressive, but it also means if he's on the left side, runs towards the back post can be very dangerous. Fernandes is capable of picking a pass from deep too and he will sometimes drop quite deep for sporting and then launch longer balls forwards towards the front line to run in behind for. From a more advanced position, he's more likely to drop into space away from the defensive line and then spread the ball wide to an overlapping fullback. His range of passing is impressive though, and he generally has the technical ability to execute. He's also good at switching the angle of attacks, driving infield and then releasing a pass into the space created by his own run. The key thing is for him to find space in the first instance so he's able to have the time to pick a long pass, an angle-changing pass, or to shoot. So how could he work for Manchester United? Well, Fernandes plays best in pockets of space between the lines, with the time and space to use his technical ability and creativity. He could work as a deeper playmaker but might struggle defensively as part of the double pivot, particularly in a more physical league, and it seems likely that United are attracted by his attacking ability in the 10 role rather than his deeper passing. Now the key is to provide him with runners outside, so that he can slide passes through and then make the dangerous late runs that can bring him goals. United must also not crowd the space in behind the striker. This can be a danger if teams play with inverted wingers, as everyone ends up being clustered in the same areas. They should look to stretch the width as they attack, but then have runners darting inside as a passing option, which will also drag the defence back and give Fernandes more of an opportunity to shoot. He'll also need to build a rapport with his striker. Their movement is key to creating space for him around the edge of the box. At Sporting, he's the key man and play is built around him. That wouldn't be the case at United, and his ability to function well within a unit rather than to be its focus would be hugely important. And he's a good technical footballer who could bring a lot to the Premier League, but United would need to adapt to bring the best out of him, and so would he.